silvered wings sunward i've climbed and joined the tumbling mirth of sunsplit clouds and done a hundred things you have not dreamed of wheeled and soared and swung high in the sunlit silence hovering there i've chased the shouting wind along and flung my eager craft through footless halls of air up up the long delirious burning blue i've topped the windswept heights with easy grace where never lark or even eagle flew and while with silent lifting mind I've trod the high untrespassed sanctity of space, put out my hand and touched the face of God. Let's pause for a moment of prayer. Father, we pause today and as we pause here in this safe, secure sanctuary this morning, we thank you for those that have given their lives. And we have the privilege of doing this today. We pray, Father, for those that continue to uh, guard our country and guard our lives with their lives. Lord, may you bless them today and may your hand be upon them. Father, we pray for the country of Canada. Father, you would keep your hand upon this country. Lord, that we as a country would choose to uh, follow you, to listen to your voice. Father, we give you praise for what you will do this morning. Amen. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them.
been injured in their service time, may you touch them in a special way this morning. Now, Father, again, we seek your blessing on this place in your precious name. I now can see Perfect present cleansing 
like faithfulness. It's one that I really like. Um, faith is an assurance to know that what is yet to come it will, will take place because God does give us that faithfulness to, to know that. Great is thy faithfulness.
copy of that prayer, and it's available at the office. So if you can let us know if you want one, uh, we can get you one after church this morning. Also, uh, just a couple of announcements that are coming out this week. Uh, the Prayer Summit. This has been an ongoing uh, event that's been taking place at the Free Methodist Church for uh, the last uh, few months. Uh, the last one, part four, is happening this Thursday night at uh, 7 to 9, or 7 to 8.30 about is the length of time. So uh, if you'd like to be a part of that, the information is there. If you have trouble with the registry, make sure you let me know. Uh, we can make sure and send you a link to that. Uh, also, uh, New, New Life Women's Home that uh, is uh, a part of our community, which we have had the, uh, it used to be called New Life Girls Home, and so they've been in our church a number of times over the last several years. Uh, they are doing, uh, in the fall of the year, they do a fundraising gala, and this year it's going to be all virtual uh, gala, so if you'd like to uh, set in on that, watch that. Again, there's a, an address here that you can make that connection for this coming Saturday night and uh, be a part of that. Again, if you have trouble with uh, trying to make the connection here, make sure you send us an email here at the church because we can forward the link to you and if you'd like to be a part of that evening. All right, uh, one of the things we like to do uh, when we uh, get our shoe boxes, the Sunday of, of uh, sending our shoe, shoe boxes off, we often bring them to the front. And then we have everybody gather around the front and uh, pray over them. And of course this morning that uh, is not something we can do uh, and keep our physical distancing. So uh, what I'm going to invite you to do is I'm going to invite you to stand and we're going to turn towards the boxes. I want you to turn around and look at the boxes and Cindy is going to lead us in a time of prayer this morning a blessing over these boxes as they get ready to leave. They'll leave right after church this morning and uh, get ready for their destination. So let's stand and let's turn around and uh, they're under the Christmas tree back there and let's uh, extend our hands out and ask the Lord to bless them as they go. Okay, Cindy? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the love and dedication of our service members that put together these two boxes. And Lord, we just ask that as they travel on their way, that the little ones that receive them know that they are loved more than anything in this world, that you will put your guiding hand on them. And Father, that even though they have the joy of little gifts and treasures, that they know that they come from you, Lord, that you are in their life, and that all they need to do is to trust in you. And Father, we just ask that you put people in their paths to help them to make that journey, and Father, for them to have the opportunity to accept you as Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated, and I think that has a little video clip for us about the shoe boxes that we showed. I have two right hand men, and without them, I would never get this done every year. So I just have a thank you for Daryl and for Fred. We're here in middle of Puerto Santa Ana in Ecuador, close to the Amazon. Kids are receiving the shoebox for the very first time in their lives. Gracias por empacar las cajitas de regalo. Gracias por orar por estos niños. When I was 10 years old, I received an Operation Christmas Child shoebox in my hometown, Ambato, Ecuador. I remember my favorite thing in that box, it was like this black jacket, super cool, that I was wearing until I turned 16, I think. <laughs> I understand when I received the shoe box that God was taking care of me in a particular way. He was putting his eyes on me. When I understood that, I just felt that I needed to give something back. So after I, I received my shoebox, I, I decided that I want to do something, but I was not a, a, a preacher back those days, I was Stan. <laughs> so the, the easy way was become a clown. <laughs> so I was a clown, I used to do a lot of puppets and those kind of stuff, uh, trying to just share the gospel with the shoeboxes and all those things. When you understand that God could call anyone, but He decided to call you, <laughs> It makes me feel like 
I need to do my greatest and just put all my energy as the people that were part of the party that I was in when I was 10. I want to be the same thing now. <laughs> I want to give my all my energy because you never know who around all of those children are becoming pastors, are becoming servants. We're not just giving gifts to the children. We are opening doors for them to understand that God has an entire life for them. God has a plan with every single children that is receiving this shoebox. Today I have the privilege to be the senior pastor in the Hechos 29 Church in Ambato, Ecuador. This simple shoebox gave me the chance to see my great father loves for me. And now that's the reason that all Sunday mornings I'm so excited to, to go to the church and share the gospel and, and, and preach. It gave me the chance to see that there are many people just like me that are in need maybe just of a hack or just to hurt that Jesus loved them. And now I'm able to do that because someone just heard God's voice and put a black jacket on my shoebox. Man, it's just so crazy that people are just so willing to give something from themselves. But that is God. It's God working through people for other people. And for the ones that are packing shoe boxes, man, thank you very much. You are doing a huge, huge work just hearing God's voice.
uh, with another brother or sister in Christ and share that fellowship uh, that we have. Sometimes even if we don't speak to each other, there's still that uh, spirit that, uh, that interacts with the Spirit of God. And we thank you for that this morning. Father, as we pause as a people today, we lift up to you to the needs that we represent this morning. Uh, Father, there's been uh, different things that have happened in the lives of our people this week, and we pray, Lord, that you would minister to each need today. You know the list that we have each Sunday morning that uh, we share as a body, and throughout the week we pray for, and Father, thank you for some of the answers of prayer that have happened, and we continue to lift up to you the needs that we represent here this morning. Father, we would pray especially for Megan O'Coin today, that, Father, you would work in a new way in our heart and life, and, Lord, that uh, you would accomplish your purpose and plan this morning here. Father, we lift up to you other needs that uh, uh, just need a special touch from you. We think of Anna Breed this morning, and we pray that you'll be near her and encourage her this morning, and be near her family as they are around her bedside as she's preparing to go home, and and be with you, may your spirit go with her, Father, and be with her each day. Encourage her this morning and lift her up, we pray. Father, we pray for uh, the ongoing needs that we all represent within our families. And we lift our families and, and needs up to you as well this morning. Father, we uh, uh, thank you again for this privilege that we have to worship together. And may you uh, pour your blessing upon our lives as we live this week. May your hand be upon us. Remember our uh, governments today. And Lord, minister to the needs that, that uh, we represent as a nation. And, and uh, the U.S. to the south of us. Lord, that uh, you would work in each situation. We're reminded again and again that, that you, Father, are in charge. And even at times when it seems like the world is in a chaos, Father, you are still in charge, and you're working out your plan and your purposes, and may we rest in that this morning, we pray. And now we commit the rest of this service to you, and ask that your spirit would anoint and touch today in your precious name. Amen. For our special music this morning, uh, Barry is going to come and share with us a special number in song, and we welcome you.
one where he says, Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said, My <laughs> grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That's the scripture that I was supposed to have had on the screen for you this morning. I want to take us this morning to another uh, part of our belief series. And over the last, uh, I guess it was two weeks ago, uh, we had been talking about the subject of hope. And uh, how it affects us. The, the question of that morning was, how do I deal with the hardships and the struggles of life? And the idea was, I can cope with the hardships of life because of the hope that I have in Jesus Christ. And the scripture that we made reference to that, that morning was Hebrews chapter 6 verse 19 and 20, where we read these words. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain, where Jesus, who went before us, has entered on our behalf. He has become a high priest, forever in the order of Melchizedek. In that service about hope, I spoke about hope being an anchor to the soul of a follower of Jesus. I shared there that we all need hope. If we do not, if we do not have hope in life, and often bad things begin to happen, we make bad decisions, we go bad directions. We do things that are not healthy for us if we lose hope. And as Cindy shared this morning, what some of the definition of hope is to be able to look forward with anticipation and knowing that there's something to look forward to. We also talked about some of the things that we put our hope in that's a false hope, such as uh, uh, people, such as wealth such as leaders. Uh, all these things, if we put our hope in those things, eventually let us down. And uh, we mentioned that the source of true hope, hope that sustains us, would be the hope we place in the God who created us. But this morning I want to take and visit the subject of hope again. As I was developing the message uh, three or four weeks ago, there was a, a sense that there's going to be a part one and a part two to this because uh, a hope is such a big subject that we can work with. But this morning I want to talk about how hope affects our everyday living. How does it affect my living today? Okay, we can know that we have, we're to have hope, we're, we're to uh, be people of hope, but how does that affect how I live today? So as the writer of our series says, he says, if we live in the hope of our current circumstances, so think about your current circumstances right now, the current circumstances that you are in in life right now. If we live in the hope of our current circumstances, that they will either improve <laughs> or at least stay the same, is that a good idea? Does that give you hope this morning? Well, for some of us, maybe, because you're in a good place in life today. Maybe for others, it would not be a good place to stay. In other words, it's not something that we that's sustaining in our life. If that's where our hope is focused, we do not have such a guarantee that things are going to remain the same as they are. In fact, I think most of us this morning hope that they don't 
stay the same as they are right at the moment with some of the uh, challenges that we find ourselves in in life right now. We can't live with just that simple hope that things are going to change and get better tomorrow because the reality is sometimes they don't. Right? Solomon observed that we will all get old. <laughs> Our hair and yes, our teeth will fall out. Some of us quicker than others. But the idea is, eventually, we as people, and people that we love, will die. That is one appointment that none of us will escape uh, in this life unless Jesus returns uh, when we're alive and takes us home. But putting our hope in this life leads often to great disappointment. But Solomon, in fact, Solomon called life with no reference to God is meaningless. It's like chasing after the wind. But Christ offers us something more. He provides what is true and viable. The hope of eternal life. Listen to Paul in his writing to the Romans. He says, in and it's Romans chapter 8, verse 24 and 25, 10. In this hope, we were saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what he already has? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. So as Christians, we must place our hope on the promise of what God has told us will come and the promise that Jesus is on the other side of this life. We, we will meet Him face to face. And not only will we meet Him, but we'll also meet those that have gone before us that knew Jesus. How many of you have... Uh, Spouses, moms and dads, children, grandchildren, already in the presence of God because they have left this earth physically, but today they're in His presence. I remember as a kid growing up and hearing about heaven and hearing about how great it was, uh, how great of a place it will be to go. But I'll have to admit, as I grew up, some of those conversations were really not as exciting as they are today in my life. But I find the more of those that I love pass on, and I know today are in the presence of God, my heart has done a change. I long to be in His presence. Because it won't only be His presence I can. I'll be in the presence of others that have impacted my life, have introduced me to Jesus, have been influential in the fact that I even serve the Lord today. Those people I long to see as well. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 to 54 read like this. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In the flash, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up. Death has been swallowed up in victory. 
as we look around our world today. Many are afraid of death. But the scriptures tell us if we have our hope in Christ, that death itself will be swallowed up in victory because of our relationship with Jesus Christ who rose from the dead and has conquered life. That's where our hope can, can lay this one. As Christians, we are in a place that our hope is uh, what, we, what will we experience uh, with God in His new kingdom. Eternal life, the presence of God. It gives us the ability to uh, work through some of the circumstances that we may find ourselves in today. Whatever those circumstances may be. So if our hope is in God and what is waiting for us who serve Him and follow Him, what difference then, Pastor, is it going to make in the way that I live today? The present. Now, well, let me mention two or three things to you. First of all, our hope gives us a place to look. A place to look. So, remember Peter, as he stepped out of the boat and began to walk in the water, Peter was in great shape when he started. But the scriptures tell us when he began to look around, all of a sudden the waves became big and they're ready to crash over him and drown him and he hollers out. Well, you know what? Sometimes that's true in our lives too. On a day-to-day -day basis, we have little choice to live with the responsibilities of the physical world we're living in. There's not anything we can do different. We, we, we still have to pay the bills. We still need to get up in the morning and, and begin our day. We still uh, have problems that we have to solve. And there's people that demand our attention and all those things. But the hope of a future with God, our eyes looking elsewhere, uh, dwells as something that helps us uh, to navigate life for this day. It encourages us to look forward to, fix our eyes on something that's beyond the circumstance that we find ourselves in right now. In fact, uh, in Hebrews we read these words. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Just those two simple words in that scripture. The pioneer. The one that run before us. The one that uh, initiates our faith. He is the one that helps us to focus not on the things that are present around us, but what is to come. Sometimes I've heard, us, heard a statement that sometimes as saints of God we become so heavenly minded that we are of no earthly good. Well, sometimes that may be true. But follower of Jesus, there are times that we need to get our eyes off of what's happening around us and look look into the face of Jesus. That helps us. <clears throat> Years of time have come and gone since I first heard it told how Jesus would come again someday. If back then it seemed so real, then I just can't help but feel how much closer His coming is today. Signs of the time are everywhere. There's a brand new feeling in the air. Keep your eyes on the eastern sky. Lift up your head. Your redemption draws nigh. Wars and strife on every hand. Violence fills our land. Still some people doubt He'll come again. But the Word of God is true. He'll redeem his chosen few. Don't lose hope. Soon Christ Jesus will be sent 
Signs of the time are everywhere. There's a brand new feeling in the air. Keep your eyes upon the eastern sky. Lift up your heads. Your redemption draws nigh. As a follower of Jesus this morning, hope in my life will help me to look forward, upward, to what God has in store for his people. Keep our eyes focused on him this way. Another truth is our hope will help us think differently. Helps us to think differently. Colossians chapter 3 verse 2 reads like this. Set your mind on things above and not on the earthly things. Our writer says that our minds can be our greatest enemy or our strongest ally. <clears throat> and think about that this morning. How we think is often uh, what we will do or what we will become. In our earthly culture, in the way that we live our life, we have self-help groups, we have positive thinking books, we have kindness weeks, isn't it interesting that we have to be reminded to be kind? All those things to help us, and I'm not saying those are bad things, to help us combat the constant barrage of negative input in our life, <laughs> But our thinking is to be different. Have you ever noticed when it comes to talking about, uh, about a person or a situation that we may be involved with, have you ever noticed that quite often the conversation can drift to being very negative? Especially if we happen to be in conflict with the person or the event that is taking place. Let me give you a perfect example. Okay? You're sitting in a congregation with a mask on. How many positive comments do you hear about that requirement? I think if you wait them out, probably some of the negative comments would overcome the positive. Because it's something that we don't like. It's something that's different. As a follower of Jesus, we are to be people who express the positive side of life, right? We are. And yet, many times, to be honest, we find ourselves on the other side of that. Hoping Christ helps to change how we think about things. Paul says us, Paul tells us to take our mind off the events that are earthly and set our mind on the things that are above. My hope is found in the Lord this morning. That's where I find my hope. The hope of the soul is strongly influenced by what we set our mind on. Things above or the events around us. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 and 5, here's some words that Paul shares. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world, or, the, or on the contrary, they have divine power to diminish the strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pre, uh, uh, pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought and make it obedient. That's the part that I focus on. We take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. It 
because there are some thoughts that run through our head that for sure we should never express, right? You just bite your lip and you don't say a word. But there are also thoughts that come into our mind that the scripture tells us to take captive. That means to control. And when the enemy comes in like a flood, which does he do that in your life? Does he? Sometimes he even comes in as an accuser, doesn't he? And that can bring discouragement to us. We're to take captive the thoughts. Our hope in Christ gives us that privilege to take captive the thoughts that the enemy would mean to discourage. And yet, because of our relationship with God, we can be assured that our life is in His hands, it's in His control, and we can rest in that assurance this morning. As a follower of Jesus, I am to be in control of my thoughts. I can set my mind on things above, where hope is found. A third thought this morning is our hope will help us to live different. It will help us to live different. One writer says, do you know someone who lives by the motto, if you thought today was bad, just wait till tomorrow. Few people enjoy being around that person or the people like that. Why? Because we're all desperately want to enjoy life. We want to feel contentment and live in the hope of a good day and a brighter tomorrow. New life in Christ is not only a different way to live, but it's also the best way to live. Lifestyles, choices, future directions fueled by the reality of not divine expectations from a life based on nothing but hope. So friends, this morning, as we, as we live our life, we should be different than the world in which we, we live in this morning. Psalms 31 verse 24 says, Be strong and take heart, all you who hope in the Lord. As followers of Jesus, the hope we have should make us live different. When others are wringing their hands about life, as they watch the events of the world uh, unfold around them, we should stand firm. We should not be anxious about it. As nervousness grows concerning the spread of COVID, to be honest this morning, as followers of Jesus, we can rest in the hope that we have as a follower of Jesus this morning. It doesn't mean for us to be foolish, but it does mean that I should live my life different. I should not live in the anxiety. The very worst thing that can happen to a follower of Jesus is to be absent from the body and present of the Lord. That's the very worst thing that can happen to us. <laughs> Say, Pastor, that's foolish talk. I don't think so. I don't think so. We live in a world today that is running in fear. And as followers of Jesus, we don't have to run We can live in the hope of the Lord Jesus Christ today. As the events of the world draw us nearer and nearer the return of Christ, we as followers of Jesus will need to live our lives and they are to be different from those that we rub shoulders with day after day. Why? Because we have an eternal hope. We have a hope that's beyond this world. And we can live in that hope. And I believe this morning 
that it helps us to live differently. Amen? In closing this morning, I want to close with some words that uh, come from the Belief Series by Randy Fazenz. He puts it in better words than I can, and that's why I share it this way. Since the rise of Christianity and up to the current day, martyrs, those who die because of their faith in Christ, have been a strong segment of the population of believers. Why would someone choose to die rather than renounce Christ? Why would anyone suffer torture at the hands of evil dictators because of a belief that they will not be sinned? Why would people suffer from a lack of food, water, and medical care solely because they are Christians? What drives them to place their faith above anything else in life? Well, the simple answer is hope. What else could answer that question? For millions of Christians, followers of Jesus, the hope of Christ has given, has driven them to survive mind-boggling odds, odds and die peacefully under unspeakable circumstances. The longing to see their Savior fueled their hearts to endure to the end. When we come to our final day on earth, do we face it with terror? Or do we confront it with hope? The good news is you can face death with hope. But the better news is you don't have to wait till then to live in hope this morning. You can experience that life living today. And I end with this scripture. Psalm chapter 33, verse 20 and 22. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In Him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in His holy name. May your unfailing love rest upon us, O Lord, even as we, and repeat it with me, put our hope in you. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the hope that sustains the soul. Father, thank you for the hope that uh, helps us to live different, a different life. Lord, thank you for the hope we have this morning that helps us to, to, write, to raise our eyes beyond the circumstances that we find ourselves in because there's times that the circumstances we, we live in today seem to almost overwhelm us. And even as Barry shared this morning, uh, Paul uh, begged three different times that you would take the circumstance that he was that he was living in and, uh, and change it and make it different. But Father, you said, my grace is sufficient for that moment. And so this morning, as we face a world that, that uh, is in trouble, a world that is reeling from events that uh, they really can't control and they try to, but they can't control it, Lord, may we be a people that reveal that our hope is in Christ this morning. And He's the one who makes the difference. And may we live that way. And may we speak that way. And Father, may we be uh, your ambassadors to a world that needs to know that there's hope beyond this life in your precious name. Amen. You are dismissed. God bless you this morning. Go in his peace.